Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about some general tips on how to work with any new component that you come across, alright? Because in the context of this course, right, we've covered a lot of different types of components, but it's not everything that's available out there, right? Um, there isn't really a point in me teaching you how to do every single part or learn how to use every single part or component affiliated with an Arduino because that would take forever. And also it's not doing any good for you because well, the whole, whole point is right. You should be able to adapt based on what you already know and be like, okay, this is kind of similar, but I got to change the wiring in this way. Or, you know, I should be able to read something and figure out what the wiring is. Right? So that's kind of the point of this video is like, how do you take what you've, how do you take the procedure that we've used in all of the previous videos and put it into practice so that if you come across a new component, like a temperature sensor or something like that, right, which you will be forced to encounter in our project chapter, which is chapter six, um, like how do I work with all these new kinds of sensors and understand how they work? And so this video is going to be meant to give you some tips on how to do that. All right. So here are some of the recommended steps that I have, right? The first one's kind of obvious, was figure out what the component does, right? Because if you don't know what it does, you shouldn't be wiring it, all right? So the first step is to, well, all right, well, ask yourself, like, does it make something spin like a motor? You know, is it an output? Um, does it read distance data like an ultrasonic sensor? Is it an input, right? And after you figure out what sort of what it's doing and maybe get a general idea on how it works, ask yourself, well, what are the power requirements, right? So you might wonder, like, you know, does it need external power to stay continuously on, you know, dealing with VCC and stuff like that, like an IR receiver? And how much does external power do you need? Do you need an additional power supply, kind of like the motor driver that we worked with, right? And then for three, well, what does a basic wiring diagram look like, right? What kind of resistors might you need? Think about the LCD, right? We needed a resistor for that, right? And are there ways you can check to make sure your wiring is correct? Like, you know, can you, uh, you know, maybe create a diagram for yourself that you can cross check with, um, you know, anything along that and coding, um, you know, are there any libraries that makes things easier? Or if not, how do you get the information from a sensor? Or how do you output things um, so that you can use your own code to write things, right? So these are all important questions and recommended steps that I have when you're first dealing with a brand new component, all right? Now, if you ever get stuck, try finding a video online and chances are someone has worked with your sensor or actuator before and it's perfectly fine to find a video online that can give you some insight, all right? There's also a ton of online documentation that's out there. There's gonna to be tons of information about what the pins on your component does, um, recommended power tester. Heck, there's even some people with online articles on how to wire them. Like all of this exists online. Um, and if you ever get stuck, you can always just refer to online resources to find it. And there's a, even an Arduino forum, there's an entire community ready for you to ask your questions, all right? So this is kind of what I recommend in terms of, and if you notice in our previous videos, it's kind of the procedure we've been taking this whole time, right? So we kind of ask ourselves, well, what does it do? How does it work? How do you wire it? And then how do you code it, right? That's kind of the general approach we've been taking for all our components. And then if you ever get stuck, well, you always, always have these sort of resources. All right. So that's kind of encapsulating everything we've done sort of in chapters four and five and even chapter three, I guess. So now we're going to go into the self-paced portion of this um, course, which is going to be some fun projects. So thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter.